In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. As we continue our Lenten journey, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Keep your family, O Lord, schooled always in good works, and so comfort them with your protection here as to lead them graciously to gifts on high. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. nor of counsel from the wise, nor of messages from the prophets. And so, let us destroy him by his own tongue. Let us carefully note his every word. Heed me, O Lord, and listen to what my adversaries say. Must good be repaid with evil, that they should dig a pit to take my life? Remember that I stood before you to speak in their behalf, to turn away your wrath from them. The word of the Lord. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. You will free me from the snare they set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. I hear the whispers of the crowd that frighten me from every side as they consult together against me, plotting to take my life. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of Heaven's Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves, and he said to them on the way, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, 
and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and scourged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, what do you wish? She answered, command that these two sons of mine sit, one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, you do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, we can. He replied, my chalice you will indeed drink, but to, sit my, my, but to sit at my right and at my left, this is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt, that it shall not be so among you, Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servants. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slaves. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Our gospel today has Jesus talking about his coming death and resurrection to his apostles and the misunderstanding that we see coming from the apostles. And so to talk a little bit more about this, we have our Paul's novice, Zach, who is going to share a few words with us. So first things first, can you all hear me okay? Perfect. Imagine for a moment that you've just come home from the doctor's office and you share with your family the tragic news that you have a medical condition which tragically is uncurable and the best estimate is that you have about six months left to live. And instead of offering you the support and the love that you would expect from any decent family, the first thing that comes out of their mouths is, by the way, can you make sure that everything is settled with your will so that we're the primary beneficiaries? That's basically the situation our Lord is dealing with right now. He has just gotten through telling his disciples that he is about to be brutally murdered, and the first thing that happens, James and Zong come along with their mother to boot and ask, hey, when all this is over and you do enter into your glory, can we have the highest positions at your right and left hand? Something is clearly off. And so Jesus has to remind them that when it comes to his kingdom, things are going to be very different. Can you drink the chalice that I'm going to drink from? And indeed, we see this later on. James and Zon would both have to suffer many difficulties because of their belief in Jesus. And this is actually made more clear from our first reading where Jeremiah is complaining to God because he's hearing that the people of Israel are plotting his own murder because they don't like what he has to say. They don't want to listen to his call that they turn away from their evil ways and come back to God. And indeed, that's what the Christian calling is about. It's a calling of turning around, repentance, making a change in our lives in the way we view the world. And when it comes to achieving this glory in heaven, which, yes, our Lord did promise us this, but it's not about making sure we get to sit at his left hand or at his right hand when he comes to his glory. Heaven isn't an escape from having to do the good things that we're expected to do here on earth. Quite the opposite. Heaven is the fulfillment and the perfection of self-sacrifice and self-giving, where we will now share in that perpetual act of giving that already exists in the inner life of the Trinity. So far from seeing the kingdom of heaven and our work on earth as merely the gaining of our own glory, 
we should follow the example of our Lord on the cross, who came not to be served, but to serve. And by cooperating with him, we too can continue the work of redemption in the world. And so now, with trust and confidence in our loving God, let us together lift up our prayers and petitions. We pray firstly for all peoples of the church. We pray that during this Lenten time, we may continue to strive to grow in our faith and relationship with our loving God. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in our world who are entrusted with authority. We pray that they may use the, the, the responsibility given to them to care for all peoples. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the candidates and catechumens of our church preparing for the Easter sacraments. We pray that they may persevere in their journey as they uh, enter into our church. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are neglected and forgotten in our society, in our communities. We pray that God may lift them up through the working of our hands. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are suffering from the effects of this pandemic and for all those working to bring about its end. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick and for those who have died. And for those intentions we hold in the silence of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Loving and gracious God, we bring these prayers before you this day, asking that you grant them according to your will, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness I have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness I have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look a favor, Lord, on the sacrificial gifts we offer you, and by this holy exchange, undo the bonds of our sins through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faith will await the sacred Paschal feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer, and on the works of charity, in participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, 
they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs for eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord our God, that what you have given us as a pledge of immortality may work for our eternal salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying God by your lives.